Call the Finance Committee meeting of the City Council to order for Tuesday, January 20th, 2015. Councilors, just before we begin, just a couple of uh, quick items here, just for some housekeeping uh, um, matters as well. Um, and I do want to indicate that I received a letter from Mr. Ron Matter, who is a resident of 29 Brea Street, Brock to Mass, who wishes to speak before the City Council. And I've indicated that he can speak, uh, be present at the first uh, finance meeting in um, February, which would be, the, I believe it's February 1st, if I'm not mistaken, or February 2nd, I'm sorry. And at that point in time, if there's an objection to him speaking, then it, you know what Robert's rule says that he is not allowed to speak. So I have invited him to attend uh, that meeting and for him to be present then. The other item, as I also want to indicate to you, uh, when we get to the item on our agenda in regards to the uh, West Branch uh, Library and in regards to windows, the director, Elizabeth Marcus, could not be here this evening because she had a previous engagement, um, previous enough because it is her birthday. But in any case, um, <coughs> she did want to indicate that she would not be present. And Library Board Trustee Chairman uh, Ed Miller is here and will, will be representing the, the library in regards to that matter. Also, um, our last item, I think, is in regards to Aquaria <coughs> and also have a note from uh, Moises Parenti indicating a rescheduling because he is undue, unable to attend um, the meeting this evening. He wants to be rescheduled for um, a meeting in February. It looks like it'll be the first meeting to be held in February, which will be the first finance meeting, and we'll get to that with uh, that item there because that's Council Sullivan's resolve. So those are just a few things just to do some quick housekeeping. And at this point in time, uh, we'll begin the meeting. I'll have the clerk please uh, read the first item. Appointment, Philip Griffin, as a member of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority for a five-year term ending in January 2020. <coughs> Mr. Griffin is here, I'm sure. Good evening, Councilors. Just state your name and address and... My name's Philip Griffin. I live at 19 Emory Street, Brockton, Mass. Good evening. How are you? How are you, Councilor? Anything you'd like to say? Nice to see you. Any, any comments to the council? Well, council, I just look forward to, uh, assuming I am confirmed, look forward to working with you and the BRA to uh, continue moving the city forward. Thank you. Councilors? Motion to recommend favorably. Thank Second. You. Motion to be made and second to recommend favorably to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes to the full city council and it'll be next Monday evening for final adoption. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for serving. <clears throat> Item number two, Madam Clerk. Appointment, Craig Andrade, Andrade as a member of the Brockton Board of Health for a three-year term ending January 2018, invited Craig Andrade. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm well, thanks, and yourself? Any comments for the uh, council? It's just an uh, honor to serve my city in this, in this capacity. Great. Councilors? Mr. Chairperson. Council. I just wanted to... Uh, Thank Mr. Andrade for his uh, willingness to step forward and participate in this in this way for the city. It's very much appreciated, and I, I'm certain we'll make very good use of all your experience and public health um, degrees and experience uh, and, and other places outside of the city that you're bringing back to us. So thank you again for your your willingness to serve. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. <clears throat> the motion to recommend favorably. Second. Motion has been made and second to recommend favorably back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council for uh, appointment. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for serving, sir. Madam Clerk. Appointment. Robin J. Robert J. Palagi as a member of the planning board for a five-year term ending January 2020 invited Robert Palagi. Mr. Palagi, present. I don't see that he is here. Councilor. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Palagi has served the city in many uh, other spots, and uh, even though he's not here tonight, I'd like to make a motion. To, he's done a great job to give back to the city. I'd like to make a motion to recommend favorably. Second. second. Okay. Motion to be made and second to recommend favorably to appoint Mr. Palagi to a member of the planning board for a five year term. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council for uh, recommendation. Madam Clerk. Reappointment. Gerald Smith to the Brockton Redevelopment Authority for a five-year term ending January 2020, invited Gerald Smith. <laughs> we'll wait for Council Stadinsky, I think he's coughing. Or, or, uh, no? We'll let it go for right now. <laughs> <laughs> Modern technology. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Smith. Good evening, How are you? Everyone. Nice to see you. 
Any comments to the, uh, to the council? I look forward to being reappointed. I've enjoyed my first five years, and I like to uh, continue, continue to contribute to the city. Very Motion good. to approve. Second. second. Motion has been made and second to, second to recommend favorably to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council for appointment. And thank you. Thank you for serving as well. Appreciate it. Madam Clerk, the next item. Reappointment. Lawrence Rowley as Commissioner of the Department of Public Works for a three-year term ending December 2017. Invited Lawrence Rowley. Good evening, Councils. Good evening, Mr. Rowley. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Any presentation you'd like to make um, before the I'm City I'm just Council? looking forward to working with all of you. Um, it's what it's going to be a team effort between you and DPW. and I think it's, it'll, we'll, we'll have a good team here. Very good. Councils. Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you. Well, good evening and congratulations. Thank you. And I, I want to see you back here in a couple of weeks or whenever to, we, we discussed it. We, <laughs> we discussed uh, the water issue and, and the road construction in the city. So we are either going to be the chief uh, boss of the highway department and the public works and the whole nine yards, Larry. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll work that out and uh, we'll get the city going again. Yes, we will. And. Uh, I thank you very much. Motion to approve. Second. Second. On the motion. On the motion, Councillor Cruz. I just wanted to uh, say that I'm really excited about uh, having Mr. Raleigh here. I've already had quite a few dealings with him. Uh, very accessible and uh, is not afraid to stand up to some of the people that do business with the city. And uh, really looking forward. I think this is a great appointment and uh, looking forward to working with you. On thank the motion. You. Thank you, uh, Councilor Cruz. Councilor you, Sullivan. I just want to also thank Mr. Rowley for your years of service to the City of Brockton, number one. And number two, when uh, Mr. Rowley comes before us, he's always professional, absolutely always professional, always does his homework. And if he doesn't have an answer, he says, I'll look into it and get back to you. And he does, and that's refreshing. And he takes the time. If you ever have a question, Larry will meet with you at his office. And, and it doesn't matter, uh, time of day, he'll just do it. He cares. So. Uh, I want to thank you, Larry, and I look forward to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Chairperson, on the Council motion Stadinsky. as well. Councillor Studinsky. I'm sorry, so Councillor Stewart. Yeah, Mr. Rowley. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I've had my disagreements with DPW over my last six, five years here and going into six, making my way into six years. But I will say that working with you in your previous capacity, as well as in your present role as commissioner, has been uh, one of the more consistent uh, parts of um, my uh, having positive impressions of the department, and I will say in your present role and my interactions with you, they've always been very customer focused, and I think that's where I've had the most um, sort of concern or rub with my interactions with um, some of the previous experiences. So I will say that I appreciate your thinking of the Brockton residents uh, and, and every conversation that we've had you start off at that point, you know, what's good for the resident, uh, and then you work backwards from there to figure out how to solve the problem. So that's very much appreciated and very much recognized. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor, is any other motions been made and seconded to recommend favorably back to the full city council? All in favor? Opposed? It goes back to the full city council for. Uh, next Monday evening so that you can become the permanent DPW commissioner and on behalf of the president of the city council, I commend you and I think it's a, it's a wonderful choice and I know you're gonna do an outstanding job for the city of Brockton, so good luck. Appreciate thank, it. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Next item. Order appropriation $4,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Public Health to the Fire Department Fiscal Year 15 Massachusetts Decontamination Unit Grant. The Fire Department intends to use these funds to man the upkeep of the mass decontamination units and purchase supplies. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conner, Chief Financial Officer, and Richard C. Francis, Fire Chief. Councilors, just to make mention to you, the uh, mayor is unable to attend this evening. He uh, wasn't really feeling up to, uh, up to power, and, and I, I know that he's getting ready also to uh, <coughs> go out of state for a few days as he's going to be attending the uh, conference in Washington um, for the Mayor's Association. So he was not unable to be here with us this evening on these few items that he was invited to. But Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Councilor. Um, these are the this is the same grant we get every year. Um, they used to maintain the... Uh, two decontamination units we have, one that's at staged at Brockton Hospital, the other's staged at Good Samaritan. Uh, twice a year, 
we have drills where we have to set up all the equipment and uh, make sure everything's in good working order. So this is just to, uh, um, like I say, is, is to uh, upgrade any of the, in, any of the uh, equipment that's now out of, uh, out of service. Favorable recommendation back to the full council. Motion has been made and seconded for favorable recommendation to the full city council. All in favor? <clears throat> Opposed, it goes back to the full city council uh, with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, uh, Chief. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Dubois. Could I make a motion to take number seven and eight collectively? Motion. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to take numbers seven and eight collectively. All in favor of that? Opposed, we'll take seven and eight uh, collectively. Uh, Madam Clerk. Order that the DPW is authorized to issue one single family home sewer connection to the Barrows Realty Group LLC, 1035 Layden Street, Brockton, for the property located at parcel ID 180 023, plot 14. Order that the DPW is authorized to issue one single family home sewer connection to Tory and Associates Real Estate Affordable Properties, 41 Arlington Street, Brockton, for the property located at 15 Interville Street, Brockton. Invited Lawrence Raleigh, DPW Commissioner. Mr. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As um, my fellow councilors know, uh, Ward 6 has a sewer uh, moratorium um, due to the um, need to replace uh, sewer <coughs> interceptors in the district. Um, and so when a new sewer connection comes up, um, typically we'll take it under suspension of the rules or um, and act on it uh, that same evening. But since Mr. La La Larry Rowley is new to the position, um, I just wanted to ask him, um, Will do you believe that either of these sewer connections will overload any of the failing um, sewer interceptors in Ward 6? No, they will not. Well, thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. And with that, I move to approve. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Uh, on Just on the motion, not that it really matters, but do we know where parcel ID 18023, plot 14? It's Wellsford well Street. Wellsford. I was wondering why that was left off, so thank you very much. Thank you. So we have that thank noted, you, right? Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, send back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? <laughs> Opposed? It goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me what the name of the street was? Yeah, what was the name of the street again? I'm sorry, Michelle. Wellsford Street. Wellsford Street. Thank you. Thank you, council. Thank you. Next item. Order that pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A and a half, the City Council accepts a gift from the Brockton Library Foundation of 29 <clears throat> high efficiency windows for the West Branch Library Building. Invited John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer, Elizabeth Marcus, Library Director, Fred Howell, Library Foundation President, and Ed Miller, Library Chairman, Board of Trustees. Mr. Uh, Mr. Condon, do you want to step in first, I guess? Good evening. Good evening, Councilors. This is basically a gift to the city from the Library Foundation, but the City Council is required to accept it for us to, to accept use it. it. That's right. And I don't know, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Miller, at this point, do you have anything that you wish to add? There's Library Chair. Sorry. I would just like to thank the Council and to thank the uh, Board of um, the, the Library and uh, the uh, Foundation for raising this money. Uh, with their help, we're able to keep three buildings going, and the library does serve a vital need uh, to the community. So thank you, uh, counselors, and thank you to the foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. And I believe this is um, also, I mean, the, the second gift, which has happened in the last year, year and a half, uh, because the first gift was the money, $50,000 spent for the roof, and now you've, um, they've come you know, here with the money to, to be used for the windows. So, um, it's, it's a great big thankful thank you to the, to the Board of Trustees, or, or I should say to the Foundation for what they're doing. And, and a long history before that, Councilor, too, of financial gifts yeah. to the library system by the so, Foundation. I mean, I, I, think that's, I think that's great. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilor DiNapoli. Yes, Mr. Condon, how much, how, how much was the... Uh, I, don't, I don't know that, Councilor. Mr. Mr. Millis, you, do you know the grant? Okay, all right, well, just, just I mean, there was no figure down there. No. We, we thank them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Councilor Barnes. Just, I, I mean, if, if you're not sure, this question might actually not be applicable, but 4,000 total or 4,000 per window or 4,000? No, total, total for the, for the work that's needed. Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. All set, Council? Actually, no. Is that for equipment and installation? It's for the whole. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm all done. Thank you, sir. 
Motion to approve. Cruz did. Uh, actually, Councilor DiNapoli asked the question I had. Council thank you. Council Stewart. All right, thank you. I just wanted to have the clerk note, Mr. Chairperson, that the foundation is also interested in, in having it clear that they like to have uh, union labor um, be selected for installation. So I would like to have that noted in the records, please. Thank okay. you. Okay. Motion to recommend favorable. Yeah, on the Haggard. motion. I just I do want to echo also the Sullivan. sentiments uh, of Councilor Lodge Stewart because I also had some conversations and they do. I uh, want to make sure that when the installation does occur, that it is union labor that does the installation. And that was uh, crystal clear made to us, to Jason and I. Just to go on that, what the, well, we agree on a lot, but the uh, foundation and the board of trustees, that was the number one priority, that we pay prevailing wages and use union labor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So everyone understands that. Okay, so we're all set. Motion been made and seconded. Uh, to recommend back to the full city council, all in favor? Opposed, it goes back to the full city council with a favorable uh, recommendation. Thank you again, appreciate it. Next item, Madam Clerk. Order that the city accepts the four year phase in toward inclusion of retired teacher health insurance costs <coughs> in determining net school spending compliance, commencing in fiscal year 2016, as specified in section 260 of chapter 165 of the acts of 2014 for the Brockton Public Schools. Invited John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer, Aldo Petronio, Chief Budget Officer, Maureen Cruz, Personnel Director. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Good evening. I'll give a brief explanation. I think probably most of you will be familiar with what this issue is because we've complained about it in Brockton uh, for about 20 years. But basically, when the Education Reform Act was passed, <clears throat> there was some dispute as to whether the cost of retired uh, school employee health insurance should or should not be included in counting toward the city's obligation to support the education reform spending, the so-called net school spending. I think at the time the instructions from the Department of Education indicated that it probably should not be, but some districts did count it. So Brockton was one of those districts which at the beginning I think followed the instructions that were published. There were 127 of us. After that, when the Department of Education found the discrepancy, they got enshrined in every year's budget the fact that if you counted it and in the first year of every form, you could continue to count it, but if you didn't count it in that first year, you couldn't count it. Well, it grew from about a million seven in the first year in terms of the city's cost to about six million dollars at this point. So for years, we've been asking that some um, equity be placed into it. Either all should be able to count it or all shouldn't be able to count it and we got nowhere but finally in the last year the uh, legislature uh, listened to the pleas Bro boston was one of the communities like brockton which couldn't count it and finally said yes we'll allow those communities who are not able to count that cost right now to begin to count it and we'll phase it in according to the statute over a four-year period so we'll be picking up just about a million and a half uh, dollars a year of uh, spending that we before couldn't count and now could count toward net school spending. Um, obviously, if the budget's tight, that might help somewhat, but my view is we're simply looking to be displayed as spending what, in fact, we are spending. So when we're compared to other districts, and it looks like we're not making the same level of contribution as other districts, it's found out, no, we, in fact, are. <coughs> So I'd recommend that we vote for this. It gives us four years to get to, to full equity, but it's better than where we've been for 20 years. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Questions, uh, Councilors? Councilor Barnes. Uh, Mr. Condon, so if we vote for this now, this will cover the entire four years? It won't, it won't come back until four years from now? If, if there's no, we'll never changes? come back again. The, the vote is irrevocable, so if you okay. vote tonight, you're saying we're accepting this statute. What we're accepting is a statute and the language is implementation of that statute. Statute okay. provides for okay. four years of implementation. Okay. And once we're through the four years, we're fully counting it, but your vote takes care of it for good. Okay, great, thank you, thank you, sir. Councilor Cruz. Mr. Chairman, so just how's the uh, phase in gonna be operating, 25% each year? Or, yes. But yes, that sir. number, dollar number could grow it would, yes, that's right. It's about a million and a half dollars at the present time, but you know the health insurance costs are growing a little bit. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council Dubois. Table recommendation. Second. <clears throat> on the motion. Just on the motion, Council Dubois. Um, could I ask what is this going to mean to the Brockton Public School System? Do you think this is a question for Aldo? Does that well, mean that um, we're going to be a, ha, well, the school, the city side is able to give less money to the school side? doesn't mean that we will, but it means that, for example, had it happened in this year's budget, we could have accomplished the same uh, contribution toward our uh, spending target 
with a million and a half dollars less. Less. Yes. Do you think I, I would just like to ask Aldo a question yeah. if that's okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Condon. Good evening. Hello, Mr. Evening. Petronio. Sorry to call you, Aldo. I That's apologize. Right. Um, so if we could have achieved this, our, our minimum uh, funding for schools with $1.5 million less going to your school side, what would that mean um, for your educational system? Is it what I understand it would be? Because so the, the, city, the city could, as you said, underfund us by that million and a half and still meet net school spending. But usually each year when our budget comes up, the mayor and the CFO, they try and present a number that's appropriate for okay. us to continue our, our operations. In years gone past, um, going back 12, 13 years ago, the school department was funded a million, million and a half over what was necessary. It was due to the tight budgets that over the past 10, 12 years that it squeezed down to where we're funded, you know, 100, 150,000 over. So, um, Again, it's one of these things where it makes the city's obligation easier, but I think that when the mayor and CFO review, you know, what's in place and what's necessary, that um, they'll give whatever is appropriate. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Chairman. you, uh, Councilor. Anyone else have any uh, other questions while Mr. Petronio's here? Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Petronio. So one of the reasons that I, I'm, you know, that I'm interested in this is Quite often the state has said to us, well, we don't, the city isn't really doing its fair share of net school, uh, of base pay, base net school spending, correct? Correct. And so now we'll be able to, I mean, for years we've been saying, well, you know, we're paying this much more, but you don't count it towards us. Now we'll be able to, they'll look at what we're, the city is spending and this will actually be counted. And so if, if we don't take anything away from the schools, which is not what I'm looking to do, they'll now be saying, yes, you're spending whatever the percentage is, that these other cities and towns that took it <coughs> 20 odd years ago Correct. look like they're spending and they're not spending even as much as us. Correct. Across the state, school systems are funded anywhere from 95 to 125 percent of the foundation budget. And Brockton is usually at 98, 99. We're close. This would bring us to the This 100. would make us at a 101 or 102 percent. I don't know if 102, but maybe 100. Well, once the whole 6 million, uh, which well, would probably be 8 million by then. Sure. So that, that, once it's fully fully involved, yes, it, it would bring us up to much closer to 103 or 104, probably. Probably. So, thank you, thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, Council. Councilor Bonds. And just for clarification, um, this money that's coming in is it discretionary spending? Does it go into the general account, or is it um, is it identified to go to a particular program, or just? It's it's money that's already spent for for retiree health insurance. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. It did say that. I'm so sorry. I got lo I got caught up in the figures. Sure. I'm sorry. That's right. Thank you. Sorry. All set, Council? Yes. Sorry. All set. I be any other councils for either Mr. Condon or Mr. Petronio? I believe there was a motion on the floor and it was seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? It goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you both. <coughs> Next item, Madam Clerk. Order that the city council authorize the approval of the solar power and services agreement between Sun Edison Original Origination LLC and the city of Brockton. Invited John A. Condon. Chief, um, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner, Jared Comerford, Sales Director of Sun Edison. I'm going to uh, turn to Councillor Studinsky because I think you also Thank want you, to have Mr. some Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Else. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Just I want to let the council know. There's a gentleman here, Mr. Comerford is invited, who is the engineer who right. would be able to oversee the placement of these uh, uh, particular stanchions in, at the uh, site. And he's not listed because I didn't know he's going to be able to get a hold of him. So if nobody has an objection, when the time comes, if you have an engineering type question, he's the gentleman who can give us the answer. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> no problem with that. Thank you, Mr. Carney. Go right well, ahead. Well, I think basically the best thing to do is to turn this over to <coughs> questioning from uh, Councilor Studensky and the folks from Sun Edison. This thing was recommended favorably, but the councilor had some questions about the care that will be taken on the installation at the at the landfill, and we've got the people here I think who can answer those questions. Very good. Councilor Studensky, is there any one particular one you want to come up uh, to? I'd actually, if, if we could, to we, Jared, can you give us the name of the uh, engineer? Can you come up with him? Sure. Uh, Thank you. Good evening. 
Good evening. Thank you for having us back. Um, I understood there were some uh, constituents who had questions about the siting of the system, especially being that it is on a landfill. Uh, I brought a colleague of mine, uh, Dave Moulton, who has worked on some of the other uh, brownfield projects that we've done um, in the region and can answer specific questions as to our safety standards and how we develop these sites on landfills without upsetting um, anything that may be in the landfills beneath the service. Very good. Thank you. Is that you want to? Sure, why don't you come on up and uh, join in and... Hi, I'm David Bolton from Sun Edison. If you could, could you explain what the uh, placement, how, how this is going to be brought through? And, and the reason we ask for this is we know this was a test landfill. This landfill doesn't have methane or any good gas. It has hydrogen sulfide, very dangerous to you, your workers, and to the citizens of Brockton. So we want to be sure there'd be no puncture of the cover or, or anything like that. And, to be sure of that, we need to know how you're going to uh, do this. Mr. Riley, who's behind you, is, uh, his department oversees the, the entire project, so I'm sure he has an interest, too. Yeah, of course. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, uh, point of information. Uh, just for a little bit of context. So when uh, these guys presented um, before this body earlier, I actually was incorrect and um, asked the question about being able to use um, um, the, the methane from that site uh, for future applications possibly. Um, and then I think you guys responded in the affirmative that it would be possible. Uh, and, that, and that's what caused some of the concern about residents because in fact it's not um, methane that's actually there. So I guess the concern would be that, I mean, I was mistaken, but I guess the concern from residents and then from the body here is that you guys were not aware what was underneath the landfill. And so I, I think we want to make sure you understand what's there and, and what your mitigations are for that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, typically, we would do a, a, on a, on a site like this, we would do a ballasted type system, which would be a precast uh, concrete block, essentially, and we would bring those onto the site as far as uh, making sure that we don't have any penetration of the cap, which obviously uh, we would not do. We have a third-party engineering firm that would come out and monitor us at every single point, every minute of every day that we actually uh, do any excavation in that area. Uh, in the beginning, we, would, we set up a very specific method of procedure on how to determine and ensure that the depths that we're given through engineering uh, studies that are done are, are, are actually consistent with what's in the field, uh, some hand digging locations and things like that to ensure that what we have for information is correct and we verify that in the field. When we get a set of drawings, we will make sure that uh, everyone is happy with them. We'll have a pre-construction meeting. We'll have all the parties applicable that are necessary to be there in the town and, and on our side and, and any gentleman, uh, whoever needs to be here will be there. And through our meetings, we can provide the information from our third party engineering uh, and share it however the town and, and you guys want that information, however, whatever time frame basis. The last project we did at Sullivan's Ledge, we did a weekly meeting with the town and include them in on any questions they had. All our contractors were on, were on that meeting to answer any questions uh, and provide any, any documentation or paperwork that anyone uh, needed. Where, where was the last one you did? We did one in uh, New Bedford, New Sullivan's Bedford. Ledge, as well as uh, that was the last one in summertime that was finished. And that was a ballasted system as well as uh, Greenfield, Greenfield Mass. Okay. Uh, how many have, has your outfit done? How many fields have you built? On landfills in Massachusetts too. In Mass, how about outside Massachusetts? <laughs> I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Okay. I you personally, how, how many of you worked two. on two? Okay. Both in Mass, and I would be uh, on this one as well. All right. And now I think I heard you right. There's no stake driving to hold these items, the ballast things, and nothing like that. That is correct. Usually it would be a without looking at the site and looking. I'm not the engineer for the project, but typically a, a small gravel base. Uh, compacted with a precast <coughs> block in place with some uh, hardware sticking out of it to actually assemble the racking two uh, that's determined by whatever racking manufacturer is uh, suited best for the site would depend okay. on the actual uh, size of the size of the block and All right. well, can, can you have you when we be looking at safety standards for yourself and your workers if you're going to be up on top of this we know it's dangerous if you're going to be on top, up on top, we want to make sure that you're safe, and I know you do. Uh, absolutely. Then that's something that 
we would have a, a, a hard discussion with the third party engineering contractor to see what, I mean, they are, have a better knowledge of this than we do, and we're not going to uh, take that for granted. We're gonna take what they say and uh, for information and, and use that wisely and come up with a, a very specific method of procedure on, on all safety standards like we do on, on all our sites, and especially ones like this that, you know, have uh, detrimental effects if, if something goes wrong and we're, we don't cut any corners. Okay, thank you. I'm going to you, yield the floor to whoever wants to ask questions. Councillor Sullivan and Councillor Dubois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is actually a question from Mr. Comerford. <coughs> Good evening. How are you? Good evening, Councillor. I, I just have a couple quick questions relative to your business practice. Um, of course. Because after you came before us before, I, I received several calls from people relative to your past history um, on Sun Edison. So you're a California-based company, correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Now, here in the Commonwealth, you've done two jobs. Um, do you use union labor on those jobs? Um, depending on the uh, um, requirements by the, the municipality in which we work, we, we do or, or we do not. One of those two jobs, did you or did you not? Oh, so sorry, and just as a clarification, we've done uh, many more jobs. Those two jobs are just landfills. Okay. Um, we've done um, a couple dozen projects in, in the, Commonwealth. In the okay. Commonwealth, and we're, we're the largest developer of projects in the Commonwealth. Um, without having the figures in front of me, um, I would say that um, the ones that we have done with municipalities, um, uh, all of those would likely have been prevailing wage. Uh, some projects that are on third-party land for commercial customers uh, may not have been. Could you, before next Monday night, could you get us those stats? Because I was under the impression that there's a pending matter at the Attorney General's office on a prevailing wage violation. Um, of course. Um, I'd is that, be, is be, that accurate? Is there a pending matter um, before the AG? That, that's correct. We actually approached the Attorney General's office for a clarification um, on the, the matter um, because there was a bit of a gray area. So we actually approached them um, and are working with DLS to make sure that everything is in compliance. If you could, if you could, before next Monday, get us those stats and some of that information, sure. I think that I'd would be, be very more, important. more than happy to. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Dubois. So, just to follow up on my fellow counselors' questions, um, is this contract that you're in with the city of Brockton prevailing wage and require union labor? So, so as we negotiate the contracts, um, the prevailing wage question is is handled under. Um, we will abide by all prevailing wage law. In, in this case, we are bound by that law. We are on Brockton, um, on Brockton soil, and then would be required by, by the state, um, as would any developer um, uh, building a system on your property, serving the city, uh, to pay that prevailing wage. Great. Um, I have a question for Larry, so thank you, gentlemen. Sure. Mr. Rowley. Um, Will you be having weekly meetings with Sun Solar? Yes. You will be? Yes. Um, and so could the city council be notified of when those meetings are? Will they be open to the public? Sure. That's not a problem. That would be great. So you, maybe you could send us an email? Yeah. That would be great. Yes. Thank you very, very, very much. And can you tell me, how was Sun Edison chosen for this project? Was it bid out? What was the process? Jay, can you help? The project was negotiated through our consultant in the same fashion as the uh, other solar projects that we've done. And who is the consultant? His name is John Shortsleeve. He's been before the council before. Yes. Um, can you sit, tell me why it wasn't like bid out? Um, because these projects, I think, aren't required to be bid, and there aren't that many companies that can compete on them. Okay. Um, if the council wanted these in the future to be bid out, would that be a required? Um, city ordinance or what would be the process? Well, um, one of the problems we're facing is that there's a, there's a cap on the kinds of projects like this that can be performed and you're always in a bit of a race against time to get in under that cap. I think it, after this project there may not be any more capacity in the city for additional projects but if you're looking to have the future one bid out, you, you know, if we can't get an approval from the city council otherwise then that's the only way we do it. Can you tell me how I can learn more about what you're talking about, about the cap? Is that a mass general law? What, what do I need to read to understand what you're saying? Well, the cap is Massachusetts regulation as to how much of these solar net metering projects can be performed in the state. There's an obli the, the, the state subsidizes uh, the savings. And so there's only so much that they're willing to commit to that. 
and there were, the cap was assigned in part to uh, the commercial sector and a part to municipal, the municipal sector, and it's a fixed amount, or it was a fixed amount. It's based upon your own electric uh, consumption on your bills, and in order to get in under that cap, you had to get projects fast because people were trying to get them uh, accomplished. And what is that regulation, if I wanted to read it? I'm not sure the name, too. I uh, don't know the, the name of it off the top of my head, but I would be uh, happy to provide that. Um, it is the, the net metering caps, which allow us to build remotely sited uh, uh, solar PV systems and provide those credits remotely. I believe the city is already in um, a few similar mm -hmm. deals. Um, there, we already hit those caps actually in, uh, in August. They were expanded to allow for more development in Massachusetts. And this is actually why we're, we're in a bit of a race against time. Um, there, there is the possibility that some projects do not make it um, into the current Massachusetts program. Um, so that's where the, uh, the, the timing issue comes in. But Could you email that or, or send it over to either Mr. Um, Rowley or Mr. Condon for them to forward to us? Sure. Thank sure. you very and much. It, it's also something that is being taken up at, at the State House to hopefully expand. Uh, solar development in Massachusetts has been incredibly successful, especially in at the municipal level, providing savings and development opportunities. So um, there is uh, there there will be, I'm sure, uh, uh, many discussions. Um, so once it's up and running, how many human beings will you have there? Because I know that the residents are concerned with. Um, the gases coming out of the flare and wondering how many and then w where's the liability to the city if someone does get sick on on near your solar of course of course so sun edison carries liability for for <clears throat> any damage done to the the uh the landfill based on the work that we perform um, and that would go for for any any site whether it's a landfill or not um, once this is constructed it is um, you know, a system that makes no noise mm -hmm. and requires very little operations and maintenance. Um, we actually uh, maintain these remotely um, you know, through the internet. We're constantly watching all of our systems to see if there are issues. We do dispatch people within a couple days if there are any issues on site. Obviously, if it was an emergency, we would dispatch somebody immediately. But otherwise, um, these, these sit quietly, um, produce clean energy, and then provide savings. Um, through uh, both electricity savings and lease revenue to the city for for the term of the agreement and how many companies are doing this in the in the state right now um, there are um, a few dozen companies um, that do this um, there are not many that have successfully built um, large-scale landfills um, as this um, we were the first company to build a or secure a post closure use permit which is what is needed to build from um, uh, the state to build a solar facility on a landfill, and that was the Greenfield project. We were also the first developer to uh, develop a Superfund site, um, which is uh, covered by the DPU, and that's the Sullivan's Ledge uh, landfill that was, uh, was mentioned earlier. So we have um, great experience, not only in Massachusetts, but also in other states, um, developing landfill <coughs> solar as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Council. Councilor Bonds. Uh, yes, it's not really a question, just a statement. Um, <coughs> Councilor Dubois mentioned about the safety, and you did mention that you dispatch uh, folks out here if there's an emergency, but I just want to, I guess, make sure that um, our emergency response teams um, are all aware of this, you know, plan that you have. And, and I did hear that you say that, um, that you're going to put all the safety precautions into place with the <coughs> third-party engineering firm and everything, but, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, Mr. Rowley and, and our fire and police and the FEMA folks, all those guys are, are also um, as aware of what needs to happen just in case, especially if you're not here, you know. And, and yeah. uh, yes, uh, on the uh, main entrance of our sites, we'll have a posted phone number for emergency contact for information, as well as we'll discuss with the fire department about putting a knox box so they can have access to that site, as well as give them a tour of the site. Mm -hmm. uh, so that they feel comfortable. And, and it will be a written plan that somebody could go to? to uh, well, uh, an, uh, yes, well, what we could do is uh, go, go there and put, it, put the knock box on for the fire department so that they can enter and we can walk through them and we can develop a plan at that point on, on okay. what they feel is the best method, method if there is any concerns, uh, as well as a posted uh, number that will be there <coughs> uh, on the main entrance. 
Okay. And Council, we we do have a firm that watches that twenty four seven. Okay. They, with emergency numbers, we just pick it up. They 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 monitor the monitors, the flare, um, and they visit the site once a day. Okay. And there's like a, a, a containment plan and everything, just it, in case if something were to happen, it yes, wouldn't yes. be a mushroom cloud. Okay. Yes. I think we're in good hands as far as emergency and watching over that landfill. Excellent. Thank you. Thank You're you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilors. Councilors. Council Stewart. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Chairperson. Right. So is, is it Mr. Comerford? Uh, so I was uh, ignorant of what was there uh, in terms of the gases. Um, so you you were the person who presented before when I asked that question. I yes. think so. So why weren't you aware of the, the gases that were at that location if you so guys are looking at the, the site there? The siting of the landfill has, or sorry, excuse me, <clears throat> the siting of the solar system has no uh, effect on the production or the regular operations and maintenance of the, the landfill gas. So that is still property of, of the <coughs> city. In the future, um, if that was deemed usable, our system would not get in the way of that being harvested uh, or used in any way. So there are other landfills that actually, um, where municipalities have, have used both the gas and the space for uh, renewable energy generation. Um, so I apologize if, if, if I misspoke. Um, my answer was to convey that if the city had plans in the future, uh, <coughs> which, you, you know, if, if that was deemed feasible, we would not stand in the way of, of that gas being used. Oh, I see. So the construction process um, on the site is sort of independent of what type of gas happens. It, it, exactly. And, um, you know, we allow access to um, the current <clears throat> gas maintenance system. Um, we make sure not to get in the way of any of that. I see. Great. Thank you for the clarification. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Councilor Studinsky. If I might have uh, Mr. Conan. Sure. Mr. Conan. Jay, is there a projection of the amount of money that the city is going to garner off of this project? Yes, there is. Uh, we get money from savings on the uh, electricity uh, expenditures, and then we'd also get uh, lease revenues and a pilot agreement, and I think it'll come about $200,000 a year benefit. Thank you very much. And for Councilor Dubois, I neglected to mention before, uh, this contract was negotiated for the city by John, John Shortsley with the assistance of the law department, but also um, Sun Edison is under a, uh, a group called uh, Power Options, which was designated by the state of Massachusetts to allow municipal uh, <coughs> entities to come through that particular application, and uh, we're, we're part of that, that purchase. So it was competitively bid on the front end by, by this group called Power Options. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Conner. We might have Mr. Rowley for one last question. Mr. Rowley for Councilor Stradinsky, yes. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Uh, it was good to hear you. You're definitely in tune with the uh, project down there, with the way we have to maintain it, the 24 hours, et cetera. But uh, to your knowledge, do you know, is the flare working properly? The, the flare is working properly. The problem is now that that landfill is not producing the gas <coughs> it used to produce because it's getting older. So what we have to do now is run a gas line into the flare, so we make sure that flare stays lit at all times. So whatever gas, it's, you know, it, it's, very, it's very little now what, what that landfill is producing. But what little it is, it's not enough to keep the flare lit. So we have to run natural gas in there, and that's what we're gonna be doing. Thank you very much. That's the, within the next month, we're gonna run that line in there. Great. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Any other questions, concerns, comments, Councilors? I would make a motion for a favorable recommendation. Second. Second. Side. Motion's been made and seconded to send back to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? It goes back to the full City Council. Um, Madam Clerk, item number 12, I'm not going to have you read the entire um, item because Councilor Stewart has indicated to me that he wants to postpone it, but he wants to say something on it in regards to certainly so should i do that now or after yes no I, parts I, I, yeah i'll let you uh, yeah. mr chairperson so we've had it before us before so I, we all know what it's what it's about so Excellent. i know you want to and ahead, it's Council been Stewart. revised and uh, i i'm pretty confident i have the votes at this point to have it passed however because of some personal planning issues i think i'd like to have <coughs> this postponed until the first finance meeting in march okay the first one in march first finance the motion 
That's a motion. That's a motion. Second. Second. Motion been made and seconded that we re we postpone this particular item to the first finance uh, committee meeting in March. All in favor? Opposed? We'll have it uh, ready at that point in time. Item number uh, 13, Madam Clerk. Resolved that the Fire Chief um, Francis, Chief Financial Officer John Condon, and Mayor Bill Carpenter be invited to appear before a committee of this council to purchase two new tower trucks for the Brockton Fire Department. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, Johnny Condon, Chief Financial Officer, and Richard C. Francis, Fire Chief. Mr. Condon and uh, Chief. <coughs> I believe we had this item before us previous anyway. So. Yes. So. <coughs> Councilor okay. Rodriguez was looking for what the cost would be for the city to lease the, uh, the fire truck, uh, the ladder that's needed for the uh, fire department as opposed to going out and purchasing it. Okay. And the answer is that it certainly is possible. Uh, the cost would be, depending upon how long the lease would be that we'd enter into and whether we included more than just the ladder truck on the lease, because I think the chief feels he needs really two trucks, not, not one, as your resolve says. So if you went with both, it would be about $500,000 a year if you did it on a three-year lease so that we'd be buying it at some point during that lease and owning it uh, outright and saving some of the interest charge from the back end. Councilor Rodriguez, any? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Condon, so what, what would be the, uh, the purchase price then? Well, the purchase price depends upon how much you, you equip the, uh, the ladder truck, which is the most expensive, but I think for the ladder it would be a little over a million dollars, and then perhaps four hundred and fifty dollars to $500,000 for the other truck. Is that about right, Chief? Well, why don't you come up? These are his trucks. No, right. I got two things. The ladder, I know, is over a little over a million dollars. Right. If we were to get a second truck, what would uh, the second ladder or second what, what's your What's your second need? We need both ladders. So then it's two million dollars. All right. Or if we go a ladder and an engine, then it's it, then it's it's about five hundred thousand for an right. engine. So that's what I was thinking, Councilor. Would be a little around a million and a half dollars, a little bit over a million and a half with a ladder truck new, and a second engine truck. But if the chief, as the chief said, if you're looking to do two ladder trucks, uh, then the cost would be, uh, would be higher because it'd be over $2 million in purchase. So at the moment, what we're looking to do is to secure a funding source. I think the mayor's committed to, to doing this. I think he thinks that the lease approach is a good idea. What we're looking to do is secure a funding source. And so it may be a little bit of time before we do that because he's pursuing several options on, the, on that. If, if I could just ask, uh, Chief, um, how do we? What do we stand with the uh, with the current equipment that we have in terms of the uh, the ladder trucks? You, we only had one in service at the time. Is that second one somewhat <coughs> remedied, or is it still uh, basically? What we out? what we have right now is we have ladder one that runs out of station one. <coughs> that truck's 19 years old. Um, it's a good uh, spare truck, not everyday truck. We're running it every day. The other ladder truck we presently have is ladder two down at Camp Pello. That's eight years old. That truck is in great shape. But we presently, um, we desperately need a new, one, one new ladder anyway. And the, the pro process, thought process is this, is that we actually, with the time frame and everything, we're actually at the point where we actually need two new ladder trucks with ladder one <coughs> as, as, as a spare truck in case something goes out of service. But um, we definitely got to get at least one, one ladder truck. Right. And, and Mr. Condon, do we, uh, you said you're, you're basically looking for uh, funding sources. Is there any discussion at all with the mayor in terms of where we're going to tap to see if we can get some funding so that we can get these, uh, at least one of the trucks in? Well, he's pursuing outside sources because at the moment, you know, the budget is set. Uh, so the funding sources internally would be the stabilization fund, and we, we need to get through the winter to see what's left in that. After that, you get into the budget, uh, the budget season. I think, I think I mentioned this to, be, to you before, I think if we're going to go in the direction of a, an equipment lease, we ought to look a little bit more broadly. Uh, you know, the money gets greater. But we know that there are problems in the DPW department. I know Larry could tell you about those. And we, what I've asked for all the departments to do is to send to my office their top two vehicle equipment needs. And we'll take a look at you know, a, a bigger move on all of that. We can also borrow money for this, for this equipment as opposed to leasing it. It's not much different. The interest rates are so low right now. And that could postpone, if we were to do that, postpone the first year's payment out a year. So you wouldn't have the, the immediate funding requirement. You just 
buy it with the borrowed funds. And, and if we were to borrow, let's say, $2 million, what, what would the payments be like? Well, I think it's about eight years' worth of uh, uh, time that you can take equipment purchases on a borrowed uh, approach out, and I think we'd probably need more than $2 million. We may need like $3 million. But the interest rates now, it's, uh, the interest cost is only about 2.5%, 2%. And what do you think the payments would be annually? Well, $3, three million divided by eight, you know, and then another 100000 a year on top of that for... Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions, Councilors, in regards to this uh, particular matter? Do I have a, uh, have a motion? Remember, this is just a resolve, as the mayor did indicate. Yes. The, uh, the mayor is looking for some outside source, and he had that conversation with me today when I was meeting in his <coughs> office as well. And, and I think, Council, that's his concern with respect to making an attempt to do a, a city-only financing <coughs> right now. There's, there are other issues going on in the city, which you'll be hearing about soon. Uh, one is that the uh, school department is eligible for additional state assistance uh, for some building repair, building rehabilitation. Uh, it's about $11 million of cost that we'll get about 80% money on, right. but we need to match the 20%. The so our thinking is let's pull all of this together so we're not going at it piecemeal, bring it before the council and you can make your votes on the various projects. That's, exactly. that's the thought right now. Exactly. It's, it's not falling on deaf ears. There's no, no doubt sir. about that. It's not, not falling on deaf ears, council, so I can assure you that with the conversation you had with me today, but, okay, so. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if there, are any, if there aren't any more questions, I'd like to ma make a motion to move it favorably to the full city council. Second, second. Motion's been made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed, it goes back to the uh, full city council. Thank you, Mr. Conner. Thank, Thank you, you Councilor. Um, item number 14, Madam uh, Clerk, just to read into the. Resolve that the City Council hereby requests that a representative and or representatives of Aquaria appear before the Finance Committee to address questions pertaining to the desalinization water contract. Invited Moises Parariente, Aquaria Water, Rebecca McEnroe, PE Project Manager, Aquaria Water. And as I indicated to you, he could not be present this evening, so I refer to uh, Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilors, as, as you may recall, Mr. Parenti came and stood before this body, and, and I specifically asked the gentleman if he could come and make sure that his schedule permitted him to be here tonight. And he confirmed that definitely he would be here. He also confirmed that he would give us the materials, the written documents that I asked for, the council asked for, Councilor Rodriguez asked for, and that he would give us those materials well before his attendance. Um, that didn't happen. I, I didn't get anything, you didn't get anything. This is baffling. I mean, it really is, it's amazing that we're business partners with this, uh, this entity, but yet we're, we're getting the no-show, non-appearance, consistently blow off. So I am gonna make a motion um, to continue this until the second finance committee in February, and uh, we'll just cross our fingers because uh, I don't have a lot of faith in this appearance coming up. Thank you. Second. Uh, on the motion? Motion on the motion. Um, I think I asked this before, but I guess I'm going to ask again. Is there a way to summons him or to um, summon someone from there to answer because we are in this par partnership? It's a business. Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, council. The legislative council. body is a city council. We do not have uh, uh, subpoena power. Mm -hmm. um, relative to when we sit as finance committee, we invite people. They can appear and most most of them do appear mm -hmm. but unfortunately we don't have any it's not like congressional subpoena power we don't have that here on the local level okay. um, but again the last <laughs> time as you recall the only uh, mechanism that I think drove them to appear was that we sent it certified return receipt green card um, to my knowledge on 10 years on the council we've never had to do that before for anybody never mind a business partner with the city of Brockton so to answer your question we don't and we're just going to continue to do this and I, I, I actually will <coughs> Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I will ask that the clerk uh, continue to do that process and do it exactly. a certified uh, request again, if you could do that. Thank, Thank you. you. The clerk will do that uh, when we invite him to that. That would be, motion has been made and seconded that we're going to invite him to the second finance meeting in, in February, which would be uh, February 17th. That would be a Tuesday evening because the holiday is that Monday. So motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? been postponed until that date and make sure that he, uh, Madam Clerk, you make sure he gets notified in that same uh, correct manner. Um, <laughs> Councilors, any, uh, anything else? Councilors, Councilor Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I just I wanted to, moment of personal privilege, I just yes. wanted to, uh, to thank uh, Brockton uh, NAACP and Steve Bernard. Uh, many of us were in attendance uh, on Saturday morning at the Shaw Center. What a wonderful, wonderful event. 
Um, we, we, were, we were joined by Congressman Lynch and uh, Mayor Carpenter was there and a lot of the state delegation and Ambassador Stith was there. He was the speaker when he was ambassador for Tanzania. It was just a wonderful day and I know it continued at Temple Beth Amuna, and I'm not going to steal the thunder of our colleague, Councillor Large Barnes, but she did a wonderful job as the keynote speaker there. So uh, kudos to everybody involved with the Martin Luther King uh, holiday celebration here in the city of Brockton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's great. Thank you. Uh, and just a reminder, next um, Monday is the City Council, the 26th of February, 8 p.m., right here in the Council Chambers. I just want to take a quick moment just to mention that our clerk, she gave me a new sounding block. We got rid of the, oh, one that, nice. the one that you broke. I did break it you know? <laughs> So we got rid of it. So if there's no further business be come before this committee. Hey. 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 When will you vice, Mr.